I kind of wish we were staying another week or two. <laughs> We're on our way to Anza Borrego. We've arrived to Anza Borrego Desert State Park. And as you might see all that water, it doesn't look too much like a desert right now. Getting to Enza Borrego involves some pretty twisty, windy roads. In fact, so twisty that Highway 78 has a restriction on rigs longer than 40 feet. So before we get too far in, we're gonna stop and take a look at the map. You are here. Oh, there. <laughs> Well, that's not a useful map, actually. Well, this says, campers welcome, please park adjacent to roads on bare soil only. We've got quite a bit of a ditch going on here. If you happen to remember, we kind of wrecked our rig a little bit, trying to attempt to go through such a ditch in Mexico. We're gonna try and prevent that from happening again. So here we go. The back right one yeah. hit again. And it wasn't going to make it at all? Not even close? No. We didn't quite have the clearance for that other road, as you saw. So just taking a look, going on a little walk up this road to see what's what. Look like kind of like pull through sites. Yeah, lots of uh, kind of big rig friendly sites down this way, it looks like. It seems that something has happened to the microwave today. Not sure how on earth that happened. Uh, it's pushed in, this is pushed out. So, how is it wedged? This, oh, there it this is. This appears to be a screw. Here's one more screw. Baja shook our rig apart. So the screw holes on the microwave got all banged up and I looked through my whole pile of screws and I could not find any wider screws that aren't too long because you don't want it too long because then it will probably screw into the electronics of the microwave. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could take a little strip of duct tape, kind of like you do with that thread lock stuff, and it feels like it's actually holding now. Well, does it move? Yes. Is it supposed to? No. Use duct tape. Yeah. All right, good team effort. Yeah. Uh, it's feeling nice and secure now. We all made lunch, and it looks a lot like the stuff from the bakery. Absolutely. And we've got spinach empanadas and these giant pastry things that are, look like baskets filled with stuff. It's going to be good. We got our security cam running. It's an absolutely beautiful day. So we're going to take advantage of that and go see what's around our immediate area. And we are wild camping in Blair Valley or boondocking, some people might call it. I've picked up this new term though, wild camping. It sounds so exotic. So this park seems like it's around 2,500 feet elevation. You're gonna be a little cooler than if you were closer to sea level. I think it's going down to about four degrees Celsius tonight. Yes, and that's in the springtime. So obviously fall, winter, and summer temperatures will vary. Will they? Yes, I'm pretty sure they will. It's too bad we couldn't actually get through here very easily with our trailer without like rubbing up against some of these Palo Verdes. So yeah, if you can get past the first little bit of rough road, there's a lot of space in here and a lot of camping spots. Oh, there's so much. I tell you though, we needed this walk. We've been sitting in a vehicle for several hours. We haven't had nearly as much exercise lately as we probably should have been having and getting. So it's really nice to just get out here and have an easy walk. <laughs> I think, oh, look, there, there goes a bunny. <gasps> it's a huge hare. You gotta watch very carefully where you step. I'm especially watching for little baby choyas, because that's what got me before. Oh, there's a rabbit.
Look at him, the look on his face. <laughs> oh, you love it. That's such a down. Woke up to a bit of water in the rig, never a good thing. So we've got the parts box open again. We need these O-ring things. Yeah, so we were just standing, chatting, talking about what we were gonna do today. And I looked down at Jay's side of the bed and there is a big puddle of water going along the wall coming from the garage. So we know our source. <laughs> so let's go and fix it. Thankfully, we've had this problem before, so we have a pretty good idea of how to fix it. The connectors under the sink, was it? In the bathroom, yeah. In the bathroom needed to be replaced. So now the ones in our garage need to be replaced. So I've disconnected the two water hoses, and this bottom one is the one that was leaking from here, and it's been dripping, dripping, dripping. When I remove the washer, you can see that it's not, it, it's pretty yellow, it's pretty brittle feeling, and the um, the lip here is significantly shorter on one side than the other. This is what a brand new one looks like, quite a bit different. So I'm going to replace that, and while I'm here, I'm going to replace them in all of them so that we know that they've all been done. So I've replaced the hot, the cold water, the black tank flush, and the fresh water connection. They're called swivel seals for water PEX lines. So I would highly recommend if you have water PEX lines, carry some of these on hand because you never know when one of these little puppies might go. You could be in the middle of nowhere like we are. And thank you for watching Fix It With Mel. <laughs> it's not cooking with Mel this week, it's <laughs> Fix It With Mel. <laughs>
Oh yeah, that was cold. I think it's time to go back to the hot pool. Uh, that was not my style. So I stayed in the warm pool. Yeah. So we got back from touring around today and Mel noticed that our battery was at 50%, which definitely should have been at 100 with how much solar we have here. Now I suspect what happened was that this fuse, which is on top of our roof, has blown. The same type of fuse blew last year, actually, around the same time of year in this similar area. So I feel like these just maybe don't hold up to a lot of heat and a lot of voltage. So I'm gonna have to find a better solution, but for now, at least I've got a backup one. So the problem is actually worse than I thought. The fuse basically melted onto the coupler. I can't get the fuse off to replace it. So I'm gonna need another triple coupler. Hopefully I can order that on Amazon and get it delivered before we get home. In the meantime, I've just disconnected the couplers on the far side and put the fuse on that. So now we've just got half of our solar panels. I mean, it sucks, but hopefully that'll do. We are going on another little excursion. Nearby here, there is two little towns, one called Wainola and one called Julian, and they're right next to each other, but they are famous for pie. Mmm, pie. So we're gonna go check it out and see what we can find. These roads remind us of our time in Baja, which if you haven't seen that series yet, definitely check it out. We have come to the California Mountain Bakery here in Wainola. We heard about this place actually from Eat CRV and their video on Anza Borrego. So thank you guys. And we're gonna compare them to the Julian Pie Company, which is also famous for their pies. We're having double pie? Double pie, honey. <laughs> Let's go. There's snow on the ground and I'm wearing sandals. Let's check out the very busy town of Julian. We got street parking several blocks away from the main drag, but we could use a walk after all anyways. We just ate that biscuit and pie and we're going to get more pie. So there are many, many pie places in Julian, but we're going to what we think was the original. The Julian Pie Company. I've already counted at least four other places that do pie. It's like the pie capital of California. I love the plate, I like all the little details. So I actually prefer this one. I like the other one better. Ooh. <laughs> They're both excellent, but I think I like the other one better because it's a little less sweet. So to our viewers, you're just gonna have to come and try all the pie yourself and decide which one's your favorite, because we're torn. All right, that was pretty good. So we've got, what, uh, five or six more pie places to go? <laughs> well, even the fringe neighborhood parking is busy now. <laughs> the town of Julian has lots of pie, lots of cute little shops to buy souvenirs to remember your trip by. Definitely worth checking out, I'd say. I thought it was really cute. I enjoyed the pie. So with all these apples and apple orchards that grow around here, naturally there's lots of apple cider that you can go out and taste. We just tried one called Storum Ranch. Check their hours before you go. They're not always open during the week. Something else to do if pie isn't your thing for shopping. All right, we are at Galeta Meadows, or Galleta Meadows, depending if you speak Spanish. And this is a really unique spot in Borrego Springs because there's tons of massive metal art sculptures here. And this appears to be sort of an American style park. And when I say that, instead of walking, you're, you're kind of meant to drive from thing to thing, I guess, because they're 
quite far away from one another. <laughs> like there's one way, way over there. I mean, I guess you could walk, but they've got roads. And everyone else seems to be in a vehicle just driving the path. So I think that's what you're supposed to do. So we're just gonna join in and do that as opposed to walking. You can also horseback ride or bike through here, but we're gonna do the American style tour <laughs> from our car. Now I feel like we're going on safari. We have landed at the Anza Borrego State Park Visitor Center. And boy, it is busy on a Saturday. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's particularly busy right now because the desert is in bloom, which only happens for a few weeks every year in the springtime. And we are lucky enough to be here when it's happening. I never thought I'd be excited to see a flower on a cactus, but this is just so cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that was a close call. Thankfully, no thorns in the shoe that time. Sorry, another flower I want to take a picture of. Mm, that's gonna bloom too, look. <gasps> Darn, we're gonna miss it. We're only here at the like beginnings, I think, of it, because there's like so many buds. If you look really carefully on some of these cactus, when those go, oh my gosh, it's just gonna be a carpet of color everywhere. It's like, it's already quite colorful, but oh my gosh. I kind of wish we were staying another week or two <laughs> to see it. This one is really cool. It looks like a giant asparagus. I think if I could live in California, I would have a cactus garden, <laughs> like the craziest cactus garden. We're back at home base and we had a great day exploring Anza Borrego. It is a huge, huge park, and we've only been able to spend a couple days in the area. I would recommend at least a week, maybe two. At least, and I would even go as far as splitting that up into two different camping places. Yep. Um, now we stayed here in Blair Valley, as Jay said, we were only able to stay for a few days, so we kind of road tripped out from this center point. However, there's tons of boondocking and campgrounds all over the park. So you can go to the north side and see the metal statues, go to the visitor center. There's lots of hiking up there. Um, there's a Badlands area that we didn't even get to. And, and then come down to the south area. There's the hot spring, there's more hiking. Uh, there's horse camping even. So if you have horses, you can bring your horses because it is the desert, dress in layers you'll see I'm already in a sweater again and it cools off really quickly in the evenings. So definitely dress in layers if you're coming yeah. and bring lots of water. That's Anza Borrego folks. We hope you enjoyed. We hope you'll consider coming to stay here as well. We really enjoyed it and we'll see you next week. See ya. Hey, did you know that we don't use any stock music on the channel? All of the music you hear was composed by Jay and he has started posting it on Spotify. We'd be really grateful if you followed us there too. Thanks. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Close up. Okay. Do your usual. <laughs> Start. No, I want to make sure it's framed properly. Oh wait, do you need some fancy photos of it first? Like close up with the good cam? Make sure you don't miss the next video by liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Oh, and don't forget to check out our website and sign up for our weekly email blast. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one.